Hey, what's up, branding experts? Arik here at Ibek Design, and welcome to On Branding Podcast. And today, my guest is Soon Yu. And Soon is an international speaker and expert on growing iconic brands. So he's also an award-winning and best-selling author on branding, innovation, and design. And Soon is also the Forbes contributor, and he has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, Entrepreneur Magazine, The New York Times, and many more. So on today's podcast, we're going to talk about the son's new book, Friction, which I have right here, adding value by making people work for it. Hello, Sun. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you for the kind introduction. And I really appreciate the privilege on being on your show. Thank you so much. So in this new book, you basically ask business owners to consider adding more friction instead of just eliminating the friction, right? To their brand experience, to their customers, to their employees and so on. So you basically argue in your book that it's not really about always about making things simple and frictionless and removing that friction, but it's also more about understanding what is good and what is the bad friction and how to use it to our advantage. Right? Absolutely. So just for our listeners, I just wanted to start with the basic. Can you explain what really, what do you mean by friction? What, what is it? What does it mean? What's your definition of friction? And maybe you can give us some examples. Sure. So friction in its most simplest definition for our purposes is anything that adds effort, time, consideration, investment to your consumer, to your employees, to customers. And I do make the distinction that not all friction is created equal. There is friction that creates oh, frustration, uncertainty, risk, stuff that you want to basically pull your hair out from, right? And that's right. what I would consider bad friction. But there's also friction that makes you pause and think and reconsider and actually make a commitment to something, or it creates more meaning when you finally decide to actually follow through on something because of all the time and effort you put into it. There's friction that what I talk about creates the happy chemicals. And we looked at right. this set of happy chemicals. They are dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins, and adrenaline. And when we looked at those happy chemicals, we realized that it is actually very difficult to elicit those happy chemicals without some degree of friction. So let's take each one. Dopamine is yeah. what I would consider the anticipation drug. It's the reward drug. It's what happens when we put a post up and we keep looking at how many likes did we get? The feeling we have when we're waiting for something really important to happen and it's been mm -hmm. delayed and finally it does happen. Or it's the energy we get when we have to take a big test like in the United States, the SAT test. There's all this dopamine that gets generated. And then the idea that after you've taken the test, you have a sense of relief and a sense of yeah. reward. So that's all dopamine. And if you think about it, you can't create the anticipation for a reward without making people either work for it or wait for it. And that's a form of good friction when you make people wait or work for something. The other form of friction, happy chemical, is oxytocin. Oxytocin right. is, many people call it kind of the love chemical. It actually is what gen is generated when mothers and babies hug each other for the first time. And a lot of that is about physical friction. It's about the friction of being in the presence of somebody that you care about and love. And so this whole pandemic actually reduced a lot of oxytocin because we made most of our interactions through Zoom. And then there's serotonin, which is actually the recognition chemical. And that is all about, hey, did I prove myself to somebody else or prove myself to myself? And, you know, did I, did I earn the right to be recognized? And the earning the right is also another form of good friction. Endorphins right. call it the pain relief drug where you're on the 25th mile of your 26 mile marathon. It's what kicks in. And again, you don't get to that type of happy chemical unless you've actually jogged those first 25 miles. And of course, adrenaline. Adrenaline is a situation where you need some risk. You need to yeah. feel a sense of either danger or excitement, and you can't create danger or excitement or risk without adding some friction. So that's yeah. how we came up with the idea that not all friction is created equal. 
In fact, there's a lot of friction out there that's needed to create those happy chemicals. Right. So just so, some of my takeaways for you guys who are listening. So first of all, we need to understand the, the difference between good and bad friction, right? And good friction, as you already gave us some, some examples, they gonna release those chemicals. And you describe them in your book. There are five different ke chemicals, adrenaline, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. And there are different, you, you give us different tactics on how to do that, right? Step by step. So good friction can add things like, like you already mentioned, but also other things like assurance, report, exclusivity, and so on. So I wanted to talk about some of those, right? You mentioned sh seven different ones in your book. So maybe we can, I'm not sure if you're going to have time to, you know, go through all of them, but maybe we can describe a few of them, like exclusivity. I think this is pretty interesting. It's like playing hard to get like brands like Birkin and Hermes bags, like you described. Sure. There's seven different, what we call virtues of good friction that brands and businesses can think about. When they add friction into their system, is there a way to add friction to create one of these seven virtues? So the first one you mentioned is, hey, exclusivity. It's what kicks in. And again, you don't get to that type of happy chemical unless you've actually, actually jogged those first 25 miles. And of course, adrenaline. Adrenaline is a situation where you need some risk. You need to yeah. feel a sense of either danger or excitement. And you can't create danger or excitement or risk without adding some friction. So that's yeah. how we came up with the idea that not all friction is created equal. In fact, there's a lot of friction out there that's needed to create those happy chemicals. You know, if everything is easy to get and it's available, then there's no yeah. serotonin and no dopamine, right? Because it's too easy, right? And when something's too easy, it doesn't create as much excitement and it doesn't create as much anticipation. And once you get it, it's not like you can show off like, okay, I got this. Well, so did I, and so did everybody else. Whoopie doo. But if you were able to get a Birkin bag, which is very difficult to get, it's not about having the money. It's about having the connections and the relationships with the salespeople and spending many hours in the store, buying other types of products so that you become on the preferred list and et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. All that yeah. is a certain type of friction so that when you actually do end up getting the product, it's so much more meaningful to you. And smart businesses don't offer everything they have for free, right? You know, in fact, there's studies that show that consultants who have charged higher prices actually get greater demand than those that are almost free. Yeah. Because people think, well, there's a reason they're pretty valuable. Nice. Their time's valuable. Yeah. So that's all about exclusivity. The other one we talk about is meaning. Again, if you think about anything meaningful in your life, it's usually associated with something that you put a lot of time, effort, relationship, time, whatever towards. They talk about a good example is the lottery. Those people who oftentimes win a lot of money in a lottery early on in their life, if you look at the research, many of them actually end up penniless and oftentimes in debt because what happens yeah. is they don't really have any concept of the value of money. Now it's, it's kind of like having water, right? And so they spend it so freely and they build up bad habits that are not sustainable in terms of lifestyle. Whereas yeah. let's say you and I, instead of winning 10, $10 million in a lottery, we actually spent 40 years of our career slowly building up our income, saving and, and sacrificing and all that. When we think about spending $10 million, we're going to treat it very differently because of all the effort that went into creating that $10 million, it has so much more meaning to us. I also talk about good friction creates belonging. If you think about fraternities or organizations that make you feel, fulfill certain requirements, well, part of that is to demonstrate, yes, your interest and commitment, but part of that also create a sense of connection. Hey, we had a shared experience. We all understand e a similar hardship and we are all equally committed. And again, that is a form of good friction that actually creates belonging. Can you give us some examples here? Like for, for example, in my notes, I have Patagonia from your book. They kind of create this sense of belonging, like standing for, standing for one purpose, right? Patagonia is a purpose-driven brand. We mentioned already Herms and Birkin bags as exclusivity. I also have one more for you guys. For example, this is something like 
recently I was researching, I wanted to buy a, a Porsche GT3, but it's similar with other brands. Like you have to get on a list. The MSRP is, is one price, but then first of all, you cannot get this car just like that. You would have to be a Porsche customer for many, many years and buy many, many other cars, right? So there is exclusivity to it. You cannot just go and buy. And if you want to buy a second hand. It's almost twice the price as MSRPs. Can you give us some more examples? Because I think our audience would, would love that because these are famous brands. We can all relate and, and understand the concept. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the GT3 is a great example, right? It's a very exclusive. It's the top of the, the creme de la creme, right? I mean, Porsche is already a creme. 911 is probably one of the best cars ever made. And yeah. the GT3 is the best 911 ever made. So, you know, you can't get, it's the better of the best of the best, right? And so in that context, imagine if everyone could buy it, then it wouldn't feel as significant. And in fact, if there was so much availability, guess what? The price would probably drop. And what you're mm -hmm. experiencing is this idea that one of the ways to create greater demand is to limit supply, believe it or not. Not, right? Yeah. It is the idea yeah. of when you actually restrict the supply, sometimes that actually generates even more demand than what you originally began with. Sometimes by making people work for it, they want to actually, they they'll want it more. The same thing is true for relationships. Oftentimes I hear people say, Hey, you know, one of the, the key virtues is rapport. And a lot of people say, well, one way to get close to somebody is to do a favor for them. And I tell them, look. A better way is to ask a favor of them. And you think about the psychology of asking a favor, okay? And what happens to the person who's actually granting you the favor? If you ask for a favor from me and I decide to get grant it to you, first, you've got to be strategic in what you ask me. And it's got to be something where it's probably easy for me, but very meaningful for you. But once I've granted you that favor, Forever, I am invested in the outcome of whatever that favor was to your life, okay? And therefore, I'm going to pay more attention to you in the future. And I'm actually going to be even more likely to escalate the favor if the second request somehow builds on the first one and shows some type of impact positively on your life. All of a sudden, I feel like, you know what? I have ownership on your success. I have ownership on your career or your life or your personal livelihood. And therefore I'm going to be much closer to you. I'm going to be much more interested in you. You are now somebody I have a stake in. And so sometimes the best way to get close to people isn't to, you know, do a favor for them. It's to actually ask a favor. Here's another example that is about good friction. Pillsbury had this great idea of saying, Hey, you want to bake a cake? All you need to do with our ready mix is to add water. So in 1950, they had this Pillsbury cake mix and all you did was add water. And quite frankly, they found that the sales were very stagnant because housewives view cooking and serving food to their family as an expression of love. And when they were able to bake this cake that originally took an hour or two hours of their time, and it only took them five minutes, right? <laughs> put the water in and put it in the oven, they felt like they were cheating their family of love. And so mm -hmm. Pillsbury quickly did this research and then they realized, you know what? All we need to do is add a little bit of friction and it'll change the equation. So all they did is they changed the cake mix. So all you do now is add one egg plus the water, okay? That mm -hmm. one egg was enough for housewives to feel like, you know what? I put in the right amount of effort to show that I love my family. So again, believe it or not, adding an egg and making your customer work a little harder to enhance the experience for the customer. There are plenty of examples. I worked at the North Face, a yeah. great company. And in their Korea store, what they do is you get in there and if you're by yourself, what happens is the store staff suddenly disappears. They flip a switch and the floor, the literal floor, starts to split open and you are then forced to go to one wall. And luckily that wall has a bunch of rock climbing knobs. And then what happens is a screen comes down from the ceiling and it says, guess what? You have 30 seconds and another item comes down from the ceiling, which is their highest end $2,000 jacket. And they say, you have 30 seconds 
to grab this jacket and it's yours. And here you are, you're clinging onto the wall and these little knobs. There's no floor underneath you. It's disappeared. There's sort of this spongy pad you could jump on, but it's still a good 10 feet below you. And you still have to climb 10 feet up to get this jacket. And it is one of the favorite stores in any type of retail environment. And there's a reason why the North Face can charge almost double the price in Korea than it does anywhere else, because they figured out a way to get their customers to work, to get engaged, to have gamma, yeah. you know, gamification is another way of actually adding good friction, having white rabbits. And, you know, like when Nike does a launch of a special collection, you can't just get online and get in the queue. You actually have to know the secrets that are being discussed in all the blogs. And one of those secrets will tell you that you have to go to a public square and then you have to download an app that has augmented reality. And then you have to trial and error, point your iPhone to figure out if you can actually see the image that will give you a number that then you get onto the website to put it in to then just get in the queue to buy mm -hmm. the product. And that has been one of the most popular ways of launching a product. And that's making your yeah. customers work their butt off. Yeah, these are great examples, by the way. So I hope it gives you guys some ideas. And, and uh, by the way, you described, so there is a few words of introduction, of course, but the second part is all about these tactics and some of them you just mentioned, right? So I'm, I'm going to link to the book in the description below, but as we are approaching the end of our episode, I just wanted to ask where we can, what's the best way to connect with you? Sure. I mean, LinkedIn, there's not very many soon use. It's S-O-O-N. Why you? Yeah. So that's one, LinkedIn. And then you can always reach me on my website. It's, you know, www.soonyu, S-O-O-N-Y-U dot com. So it's pretty straightforward. And worst cases, just type in my name under Google, because again, there's just not a lot of meats. Uh, easy to find. Okay, so we're going to link to your website as well and to the book on Amazon for you guys to check it out. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you, Eric.